Welcome back, and now that we've created our animation inside of Synchro Pro, it's time to learn how to render it as a video file. So to do that, we're going to go to the animations list, and then simply right-click on the animation we want, and export AVI. It'll ask us if we want to deselect selected objects, I'll just say yes. And here there are several tabs that we want to cover. For the resolution tab, here is where you define your resolution. I always use 1080p, which is 1080 by 1920. Frame rate is the number of images per second. 25 to 30 is usually good. I'll put 30. And you can define if you want to render the entire animation or just a section of it. And you can split every bunch of seconds. So for example, for larger files, I'll split every 10 seconds. This way, if uh, I have to stop the rendering for some reason to use Synchro for another project and then come back to it. I can count the number of clips that were already rendered and then pick up where I left off by changing the start duration of the animation. For the compression codec, I highly recommend installing the Xvid MPEG-4 codec. It's a very good co compression codec that will compress the videos and keep the quality. If you don't have that codec, you can download it from xvid.com and then it'll appear in your list. The H.264 codec is also a good one, but by default you'll have the Microsoft Video one and the full frames uncompressed. Uh, for the Exit MPEG-4 codec, I also recommend hitting the configure button and changing this value from 4 to 2. Here you can define the location of the, your exported animation. You can export as series of images. We can get back to that in a later video when we talk about reports and you can open the animation location file when it's complete. Uh, in the content tab is where you define your layout and keep in mind whatever you've opened in your UI will be available here to choose. For example, we have the 3D view, we have the Gantt chart. Had we opened a EVA graph in our UI, we would have been able to put that here. So I'll just click save then cancel and do that. So if I go to Windows, for example, open a second 3D view one that shows the baseline, so I'll use dates to use baseline. And then I'll also uh, open a uh, EVA graph. We don't have costs for this project, but let's just assume we did, just to show how you would render that out. And now in the export AVI dialog, I have the first view, I have the second view, I can resize them, change my layout, and hit preview to make sure I know what the animation looks like. Here's the EVA graph, and if it's not shown, you can bring it up in the hierarchy, and it would be over here. I always recommend using DirectX 11 and then four times anti-aliasing. It's up to you to use shadows or ambient occlusion. And then once you hit preview, if you don't like, for example, the size of the font, you can go to Gantt Chart tab and scale that font, for example, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Then we go back here and it will be slightly different. Or you can change the shrink Gantt Chart text to fit chart. Let's see how that looks like. And that's, that made the text much smaller. You can display the date, the time, the week numbers for the focus time. You can also change the properties of the timeline. And finally, you can import you can input textual frames. So for example, I can put a regular text called uh, daily tasks. Make that bold over here. And maybe add a transparent background and hit add new frame. Add another one, so active filter tasks, and also add new frame. And this way, when you go back to the content tab, you can show those textual frames in your animation. And even if it shows the white background, if you click on preview, it actually has the transparent background here. 
So one more thing before we render the animation, I'm going to hit save then cancel, is in the general tab of the animations list, you can define if the animation camera movements play only in the selected 3D view or in all 3D views. And for baseline versus actual, usually use that option. And now you're ready to render your animation. So make sure before you move on to the next video that you create an animation with two views, maybe a different filter on each view, and create a layout that you like, check it out in the preview, and then render it out as an animation by hitting OK. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.